Hi, I am Tom and uh, I am RTP author. I will guide you through first steps video tutorial. We will set up uh, quite a basic terrain. I've just imported a uh, relief pack. So this is the fresh project. The first thing will be creating new terrain. Uh, just here. Okay, done. Next thing to prepare it uh, for working with RTP, we'll add some textures. In the simplest case, it will be just four. Note that uh, neither a normal maps nor its styling isn't used. Uh, it's set uh, globally in uh, RTP main settings. Now I'm adding a texture. And the next one. And it's all intended to make a terrain with four layers. And it doesn't matter which texture I'm choosing. I will change it uh, in a moment in RTP. It will be uh, even more convenient. And for our example terrain, to be not that flat, I will import ready-made height map. This is the same as used on example scene and it's also ready. And now we can add RTP component here from component menu. Now we can see that uh, RTP LOD manager has been added to scene and it looks like this. Look that we've got no defined shaders yet. To get RTP into work we have to define which will be used. In our case this is simply first pass because we're using only four layers. As we are in Unity 4, we've got an option to use materials. This is wise because of performance. For one terrain tile, it will run faster. As we see, we've got option to render different shader at far distance. And this is what this optimization is all about. Let's look at RTP first pass features. It's important that this option is unchecked and this also. At first we want to use a global color map. Now I'm recompiling shaders. It will take a moment, but you won't see it as I've made it before. And now we are actually ready to play with RTP. And this is how it looks like in RTP Script Inspector. In Layer Properties we are ready to define actual detailed textures for layers. In our simple case it can be just grass as a first layer. Next. Oops, it is wrong slot. Oh, the question is why the normal map looks like it shouldn't. For some reason it was uncompressed. But it now just works. And on this layer we will put, for example, some stones. And on this layer I'll put ready-made cliff textures. And here we just leave this sand alone. Oops, my mouse is double-clicking. Anyway, now it works like it should, um, except for global color map settings, which we are not using yet. That's why I am zeroing it. As RTP is built on the top of Unity's built-in terrain system, you can just use in this painting tools. Let's put some stones, some sand, some cliff texture. Yeah, and of course, <laughs> defining the whole terrain coverage with this method is um, a little bit inconvenient. 
and that's why I'll use uh, built-in RTP coverage tool. I've just defined all layers active and first grass layer will be fully covered. For the next one I'll use a uh, grayscale mask that has been prepared in World Machine. Oh, then the texture, okay. Oh, and that's what happened. Our grayscale mask is uh, 1K, while our terrain control map has uh, 512, uh, while they both need to be the same. So now I can drag and drop it. Yeah, and for the next layer I will use the same texture, but this time it will be masked. So let's find this texture and put it on the mask slot. Yeah, and for the last layer we will use grayscale mask with sand coverage. Okay. Ah, here we are. It's ready. Uh, let's zoom in a bit. Ah, uh, yeah. Now uh, terrain looks much better, but it is still far from being perfect. And what we will do now is preparing right distances and uh, terrain detail tiling. Let's say four meters, which means that 500 tiles will be spent over the whole terrain. Yeah, and it is important to keep it integer because we could uh, experience seams between uh, adjusted terrain tiles in case we use multiple terrains. And now what we see and what we don't like is uh, just this repeating patterns on the slope, which can be nicely hidden by some RTP options. Let's click on scene view, let's uh, press L and we are already on the layer. Now let's notice we are playing with UV blend options. Uh, which are meant to mix themselves with a uh, selected layer, but using a different scale. Let's say something like this works okay. Yeah, but as this is not enough, I will use a perlin texturing to hide tiling even better. And perlin texturing works as soon as we just visit it in settings. And what's the most interesting, uh, here we just define the so-called far distance. And this is so-called close distance, at which we uh, render the most detailed, for example, parallax effects. So naturally uh, it implies that it should be kept as low as being acceptable to get the best performance. Now when the beginning of close distance is set to zero, then we can put to zero uh, the beginning of far distance, which starts at zero now. That's why we can put higher starting value and ends at the fade length. So close to the camera we will have the starting value of purely normal. And at the end of uh, far distance purely normal will be applied at full strength. And look how does it work. For this layer I will adjust it. Yep. And with this additional pearly normal map, we've got this uh, detailed patterns quite good hidden. And this is not the only advantage. Look how much detail we gained in the slopes. So, as RTP stands for Relief Terrain Pack, one of the main features that are unique is ability to use parallax shaders. Let's try it. Oh, maybe not with grass. Okay, let's take some rocks and let's play with parallax settings. Yeah, here we can see how this uh, parallax extrusion works. Yeah, maybe I will pump better window to see the effect. Yep, so look at the corner. And for basic setup of terrain, this is just fine. But still, many things to improve. Now we'll play a bit with a global color map. 
which can be constructed right inside the editor, which is here based on coverage and colors which will be taken are average colors of detailed textures. Now we can separately control the blending of global color map for near distance, far distance and something in between which is here named mid blend. Yeah, the color blending is multiplicative, uh, it could result in uh, too much saturation, so it is also adjustable here. And no matter how hard we try, let's play a bit with this, uh, it won't look any better. Just because this is simply a map of coverage, not, uh, let's say, professional color map produced by some third-party software like Word Machine, which could provide us with additional color information for this uh, terrain. And that's why for the sake of this tutorial we will use a ready-made global color map from a world machine with baked lighting information. And with such color map our terrain looks instantly better. Now let's play a bit with settings. Maybe a bit higher blending values. Uh, restore our brightness to 1 and as we are using uh, baked lighting information it is superimposed with mesh normals so we've got here an option to reduce um, normals that are taken from uh, mesh and this option is named for normal dump and our case value of 0.3 works ok also let's notice that with uh, global color map our terrain don't need to be uh, very detailed in terms of triangles count when the pixel error can be set very high and the terrain looks uh, still very good. And for this first steps it is quite enough. The next tutorials will cover the rest of RTP features. But at the end we can look quickly how would it look like with classic Unity terrain shader. And as we see, oh oops. No, the difference is quite dramatic. And the opposite in RTP, even in this uh, simple LOD mode, it looks very good. Yeah, because simple mode lacks only of parallax effects and advanced water.